Do you want to learn how to turn this into this? I'm headed to the bottom of the bottle I've been drowning, I've been floating away Every other dollar that I got And then I probably went into the way I'd Okay, I ain't liking it, babe I don't even want to talk I'm just smoking my haze I've been stuck in my ways I've been stuck in for days I've been staring at the club Well, let me show you how But first, let me tell you about Filmora's new achievement program Join the Filmora achievement program Watch this video to learn how to join and earn more rewards. Tip 1. Sign in before you start. Upgrade your Filmora to 12.5.5 and above, and sign in. Then you can check out all information about our achievement program. Tip 2. Stay curious. Click each badge's learn more button to view its task and rewards. Once unlocked, you can share your milestones on social media. Tip 3. Collect your rewards. Click the My Rewards section to check out all the rewards. You can redeem and review your rewards after unlocking the badges. Join the Filmora Achievement Program to earn badges to unlock your exciting rewards now. Today's video is all about stickers, motion tracking, and keyframing. And that's how I was able to create this crazy effect. There are nine tracks involved here. And it can seem a little overwhelming, a little complicated, but we're gonna go through it track by track, effect by effect, and hopefully try to simplify this for you a little bit so that you can recreate something yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and lock the audio tracks and mute them. We don't need those on right now. Second thing I'm gonna do is hide this, but first I want to explain why there's two of them on the screen. This is the track of the karate guy. And the way this motion tracking works is once you apply a motion track to a video clip and attach an element, uh, that's it for that track, you, unless you split it. You can't really do much more on that one. So all I did was create two tracks that were identical. So I can have a motion track here and a motion track here. And if I wanted to add more motion tracking, I would just simply copy this clip and just keep adding them in as many as I needed. That's how I was able to achieve what I achieved. But for now, we're going to hide that track and lock it just to get it out of the picture for a second. We're also going to hide this track and lock it. I do like to go through and lock my tracks um, so I don't accidentally move things around while I'm messing with them. So we're going to kind of hide and lock just about everything here except for these. Actually, we'll go ahead and hide and lock that one as well for right now. So this is all we want to see right now. So as we scroll across, blow that out a little bit. As we scroll, scroll across, we need a place to start the first motion track. And what I decided to do was to put this text bubble on the screen and then put a little word in there. So this text bubble is actually motion tracked to his mouth. So it, Filmora automatically follows the motion track of his face. And it falls off a little bit. That's pretty common with the motion tracking. You can tweak it, but I kind of like the way it worked out, so I'm not too concerned about it. Now let's look at the track itself. I'll go ahead and just expand that a little bit so you can see that we have a little symbol here. That symbol is the beginning of my motion tracking. I'll get that on the screen for you so you can see it. And then right here to show the target box. And then you can see that I've placed the square uh, pretty much on his mouth, but I left 
quite a bit out there so that the motion tracking, you, you got to give it a helping hand sometimes. If you make it too small or too big, you might have some problems. So you just got to tweak this around. No big deal. And then I just went ahead and I, I'm not going to do it right now, but I said click tracking. So the first thing it does is it just tracks the movement of the square. So whatever's inside that square, it attempts to track the movement. Okay. When you're finished, you go here to link element. Now you have to have an element already on the screen. Uh, you can import one, but it's easier to just throw the element on the screen first. Once it's finished tracking, you just simply link it. Then you place the element where you want it to start and it'll just follow it around. So see that very first dot? So I stuck the element there just by using my mouse. I just clicked on the element and I just moved it around until I, where I wanted it. And then motion tracking pretty much took care of the rest for me, as you can see. So that was that. That was the first motion track. Let's get off of that. The second thing I did is I wanted a little fire, a little smoke, I should say, coming off of his hand as his hand came across. So let's, let's go back to the uh, motion track for one second. And I'm going to turn that box off. We don't need to see that anymore. And we'll go ahead and hide the little doodle there as well. So let's look for the smoke now. Let's unhide this little puff of smoke here. So I wanted to add a little puff of smoke right there. Now it's very subtle. It's very subtle and that's what I wanted. I didn't want much reveal going on here. I just wanted a little and uh, some people maybe maybe not even caught that in the beginning but um, subconsciously you probably did. That was my intent. So uh, all I did there was just use the puff of smoke, lined it up, I moved it a little off screen, and that was it. I didn't need to keyframe this one. I didn't need to do anything to it because it kind of worked itself out just the way I wanted it. Got lucky on that one. Next thing I wanted to do was to put a little text inside the bubble and then just sort of have it follow the bubble around as the motion tracking moves it. And, you know, I didn't get it perfect, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it either. So each one of these down here represents a um, keyframe where I just simply move the text. So each time you see one of those little little diamonds, uh, I, sh I just move the text around. All I did was just highlight the text, um, turn on the keyframe button here, and then just use the keyboard controls left, right, up, and down, and just kind of jiggled it around, you know, little jiggled it around a little bit until I kept it close to the bubble as I could. Next up, we did a little fire. So let's show you, uh, I got two things going on here simultaneously. So let me show you the fire effect first. So I'll turn off the, the words. So the fire effect is a flamethrower effect. Okay. And same thing, I simply positioned it. You can see the positioning here. And you can see that it's really almost off the screen because that's the way the effect works. So I, I also rotated it. Um, I flipped it. This effect was actually, the fire was actually going right to the left to right. I moved it right to left by doing a flip. And then I lined it up with his hand the best I could. And just let it do its thing. And then right here, I split the flamethrower. So we start fading down the opacity right at the split until it's basically gone off the screen. That's how we achieved that one. Back up to the top. I know there's a lot going on here. Just go through this a little at a time, pause it, try to recreate what I did, and then pause it again. Up here for the word fire, I chose a pre-made title called Luminance Title One. And then I added an animation effect for out to fade it out, and that's what I used, was fade out. These are some new effects that came with Filmora 12.5.5 uh, and beyond, so you can now use an in effect, an out effect, or you can loop it if you want to just like do a flash on it or something. I wanted this one to fade out. And I also cut it shorter than it originally was um, to avoid some movement. So there it goes, it just fades right out for me. So fire and gone. Now, let's get to a very interesting effect. 
I wanted something as the other hand comes back. Not sure what. I was thinking about more fire, and I was thinking about some more smoke. And um, let's shrink this in a little bit. But I decided to go with a little lightning. So right here. Let's turn it on so you can actually see it. And this is from the, uh, the Superheroes pack, uh, the Elements pack, Superheroes cinematic pack. And I really like it. I've used this one a couple times. So as we come across, we put it right off of his finger, and then I split that effect so it would just, and then I did the opacity trick again where I just faded it out. So I stopped it from moving right there, and what we did was another motion track. So I motion tracked the tip of his finger, and then I linked, I'll put the box on the screen so you can see it, Motion tracked right here. Then I linked the Superheroes cinematic pack to it. And the end result is it followed his hand. Now I did go ahead and take this effect and just kind of slide it back. I had the motion track a little too far in. So I just, instead of redoing it, I just slid the motion track, the motion pack over a little bit. You can see where I'm off center now. And that followed it perfectly. And then I let it stop. And then I changed it over right here. And you can see what I did with opacity. Now I use this opacity trick in a lot of my videos just to make things fade out. It's so easy to do with, with the new way to keyframe things. It's just so simple. Anyway, that's it. There's a ton going on. I added some sound effects. I added some music. I put a little whoosh sound at, at this one place. You may not have even picked it up, but again, this is one of those um, sub, subliminal kind of things that your brain says something happened, but maybe you didn't quite get it, but that's kind of the point. You hear that whoosh right when as I put the word fire on the screen? Anyway, that's it, guys. This is motion tracking, keyframing, stickers, all combined into this crazy video <laughs> that I made for this demonstration. And we'll see you guys real soon on the next video.